everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk, where you get great news from great interviews, from great interviewees, with sometimes a comedic touch. Uh, before I get into my guest uh, that I have today, uh, some kind of big news. Uh, there's a very, very good chance that we have the Killer Dwarfs coming back to Sault Ste. Marie, but we'll give you more details when they come in. But in the meantime, we have somebody who's definitely coming to Sault Ste. Marie, Mr. Colin James. How are you doing today, my friend? I'm well, thank you. Very well. So you got hit in some traffic today in BC and some rain out here? Uh, yeah, it's been like we were we were down south for most of last month. And uh, I'd, I'd look back at the weather back home and, uh, you know, we hardly had any rain, maybe a day or two. We, we went all the way from Los Angeles to uh, to New Jersey by the time we were done. Yeah. But we were lucky. We, we, we didn't get a whole lot of weather. I, I figured maybe I got over the worst of the weather in Vancouver. But no, it's been, uh, it's kind of just been raining ever since I got home, but. And I uh, understand uh, you got caught uh, with some shattered glass recently. We had a lightning strike. So I'm talking to my mom on the phone and, and uh, right above my head, there's this cannon burst, like, and the, the glass just shatters, but it doesn't shatter into the house, it shatters outside. So there must've been, must be some kind of vacuum or yeah. some kind of pressure related uh force that pushed everything out wow and it was bizarre i've never i mean i've seen i've seen i've been in calgary where lightning hit a pole i, I know i've seen it happen but we got nailed my my neighbor got nailed his modem got blown out uh, our neighbor over here uh felt it i forget what happened at his house something got broken in his house all three of us just got we must have been like right there you know Wow. Well, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it probably has something to do with your dynamic energy. Maybe that's it, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. We'll go with that. So okay. anyways, before we uh, get into talking about the show, um, you know, I mean, I've, I, I've been a big fan of, you know, I mean, Voodoo Thing, I just came back, all those great songs. I remember, like, I'm primarily a Def Leppard guy, but I did really get into your stuff and I'm a big bluesy kind of fan. I remember a guy, I, I think you'll be very familiar, Wild T in the Spirit. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wild T back in those days. That time, I haven't seen him in years though, man. I have not run into him in ages, but yeah. I don't know what he's doing either, but anyways, we're here to talk about you. And one thing I came across uh, when I was um, like, I don't really have to do research when I want my interviews and stuff or I get them because I'm obviously a fan, but um, I didn't realize you got your, break with the stevie ray vaughn tell us about that it's, i mean it was a long it wasn't as if uh it's a unique you know, story it, it is a unique story and, and it wasn't like there wasn't a um a beginning to it though I, I guess the beginning would have been the fact that when i grew up in saskatchewan um i was kind of known as one of the only people that did blues around town there was other people but not many one one or two and especially at my age, when most people were playing, you know, songs by the, the police and, and like, you know, doing cover shows, um, you know, I kind of got, uh, uh, I got used to playing. So when George Thorogood came to town when I was 16 years old, I got the opening gig for George Thorogood. So I played wow. Winnipeg, Saskatoon, Winnipeg, Regina, the opening for Thorogood. And that same year, I opened up for John Lee Hooker. Uh, yeah. John Lee Hooker came to Regina and I opened up for John Lee. So... The reason I got the job with Steve Ray Vaughan was because the same people who put me on stage in my hometown, I'd already le left my hometown. I'd moved to Vancouver, but I'd only been gone for maybe two years. Right. And I went back to Regina just to take a break. I think I got, it's a long story, but I was taking a break, just saying hi to the folks, basically. Coming back from Vancouver and I got, my mom says, oh, you know, somebody called you. Somebody called you today, said that, there's a Steve Ray Vaughn's playing in Saskatoon tomorrow night. And can you get there in time to open up the show? And I said, was that, was that Kevin, you know, Kevin Donnelly? She says, yeah, I got him Kevin. I said, Oh, <laughs> okay. So I phoned Kevin and I said, what's the deal? He says, well, Steve Ray Vaughn just fired his opening act last night in Edmonton. Can you make it to Saskatoon by tomorrow with a band? And I said, well, I'm not even living here anymore. I have no idea who to call. I've been gone for years, so I don't even know if anyone's even here. Yeah. And so I said, give me a minute. So I phoned everyone I knew and nobody was here. Nobody I knew could, uh, that I could trust. 
So I, uh, I phoned another friend in Saskatoon. I said, what do you think I should do? And he says, why don't you phone the Saskatoon Jazz Society nice. and see if anyone at the Saskatoon Jazz Society can tell you of a good drummer and a bass player that, that might be, have the experience that you need in short notice, you know? So I did. I got to Saskatoon around five o'clock and uh, this pickup drives up with these two guys in the back with drums all piled up. And, and these are these kind of what I thought were middle-aged men, but they were like 10, 15 years older than me. Yeah. And uh, they said, well, what are we doing? A wedding, a bar mitzvah, what's the deal? I said, no, 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 we're playing the main room in front of Steve Ray Bond. And, and in fact, we're on in about like two hours, you know? Um, so we got a rehearsal room. And so I go off into this rehearsal room with them and we start trying to go over some songs. Uh, Jimmy Reed, I'm thinking, uh, uh, you know, Willie Dixon. I'm just trying to think of some covers that'll be fast and easy that we can learn yeah. in time. And it was, so we're just about three songs in and this guy comes barge, barging in the room, which is Steve Ray Vaughan with his hat and everything. And he says, <laughs> is it true what I, what I, what I heard? Is it true what y'all, y'all just met each other? And I said, I'm afraid it is true. <laughs> we are, we're just meeting each other. Uh, you know, we're on and like, he goes, well, good luck. You know, and he, he strode off, you know, and uh, that night, I didn't have any management or anyone with me. And, and um, I broke a string. I broke two strings within about a song. And um, Steve Ray Vaughan's guitar tech handed me one of Stevie's guitars. And wow. from then on, we talked on the break. And then he got me up for the encore. And then I got up the next night. And, and then a year later, he played Edmonton and Calgary. And he phoned me. He, I, got, I got, got a hold of by a promoter and said, can you be in heaven to buy? Same thing happened the next year with a band wow. that I never met before. So both, anyway, it's just about one of those right place, right time stories. Wow, no, that's a great story, man. So, oh, so you've been busy. You haven't quit since uh, back in the day, as we say. Um, you have a new album, Open Road. Um, anything interesting on the collaborations? Any guests on that uh, album that you work with? You know, one thing I'm really proud about with my, my newest records is that the last three records of mine in particular, because back in the day when I was with like, whether I was with on a major label or an independent label, you know, you try to make some, you know, uh, you would get given a budget and sometimes you'd record someplace exotic, like, you know, the Bahamas and you'd, yeah. uh, you know, you had a bit of money to throw around and, and get guests in, um, and I was very lucky over the years, Mavis Staples being a guest that's played on my record or Bonnie Raitt sang on my second record. That's right. But, yeah. but, but on these last three, I used my guys, my touring band. These are my band. And um, yeah, so I, I'm pretty proud of the fact that we, you know, I think we're making, you know, I think we're making world-class blues records uh, in our own way with the producer that I'm used to using for the last three records in a row, David Mazaros. Uh, so uh, I'm real proud of that. Uh, my 20th record, you know, we just well, opened yeah. up the record down and starting with Buddy, uh, Buddy Guy in Los Angeles yeah. uh, last month and 19 shows in a row after two years of sitting around. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Um, and nobody got COVID, which was fantastic. Right. Uh, we, we played, you know, lots of venues uh, down in the States. People have been already touring for over a year already. So yeah. I played my first state shy sh show in Las Vegas in September, and that was my first show at all after the pandemic. Yep. And then, uh, but it felt great to get my hands back. And um, and these you know, these trio shows. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of to, to give you an idea of what to expect on those shows. Yes. We still play. We still play. You know, some of the old hits. We do uh, kind of reworked them out. You know, versions of just came back, and uh, right. you know, I'll play Why July and stuff like that. But I love them because, the, you know, on a, on a show where you, uh, when it's full band with drums, which I love, you can, you can afford to go through a whole night without barely talking to the audience, you know, because uh, you've you got power, you've got drums, you can just kind of wail on the songs. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. You know, yeah. these, these, these trio shows have really forced me to talk about the songs in a bit more of a individual way you know, bring up the story behind just came back how did it come to my how did that song end up on my record you know uh how did why july end up on my record so we have a tendency to a chance to engage a little closer for so for me as an artist it's really taught me these acoustics i started doing them i guess about eight years ago maybe 10 years ago 
And uh, we do them and I do my full band run. And then we do these other shows where we can still play nice little theaters, two, 300 seats theaters, but have a more of a, a night with, you know, a, a single set. Then people can go have a drink. Um, and then we, we, we join up for the second set again. And you could just afford to do songs that are a little more, uh, a little less bombastic, you know, still rock when you need to yep. and have fun. But uh, you can play a few more ballads and, and pretty stuff. It's, it's almost like a musical biography live. Well, sure it is, actually, because I'll talk about the first record and, you know, when I flew to Miami to work with my first producer, Tom Dowd. And, you know, there's a, so all kinds of stories can happen out of it. And for me, like I say, it was a real learning experience for me to do it because I, I, I think I brought that into my other show now because I'm a little less uh, worried about talking between songs. You know, I, I don't yeah. mind doing that a little bit. You know? well, I, yeah. I, I, th I think the fans actually enjoy that. And speaking of which, the venue you are playing, uh, the Sioux Community Theater, I know it well. Um, you might want to bring up, uh, I, I'm looking forward to hearing the story about Brent, but he played a, a show <laughs> there, uh, stand up, and uh, you were on Corner Gas. I, just, I know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I go back. Well, but I know I've known Brett for a while now. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, oh, he's a great guy. Yeah, it was fun being on Corner Gas. You know, the woman, Janet Wright, who's, I think she's passed on since then. She played yeah. the mother. Yeah. She was one of my, I actually acted a little bit in my youth uh, mm -hmm. when I was, I, I got my acting card look, when I was. A, you look like you would be an actor, to be honest with you, Colin. You've got it, that, you've got that face. Right, right. Well, it never worked out for me, and I've never really felt that it was a calling of mine. But, but back then, I needed the money, and I got a job in a theater company, and I had, uh, did a two two plays in a row. And yeah. Janet from Cornergas, she was my my first director. Oh, really? So the mother from Cornergas was my first director I ever had. Like I remember when I got my first script, and I'm like, how will I ever remember that? Like I couldn't believe that people could remember. A whole script you know it blew my mind the next thing you know i did <laughs> but you know until you've done it you know it's incomprehensible yeah for sure well i remember just a little kind of a small segue i remember watching this is spinal tap a, a billion times and i interviewed harry Shearer and yeah. asked him about that and he said it was all improv. There's a big difference. He says we just we know what the theme of um that skit that sketch is going to be, and right. we just feed off each other. And I was blown away because I knew it wasn't real. After a while, it yeah. wasn't a real band, but I couldn't because because I would tell people you can't act that perfectly in life. That's just natural. And so he yeah. explained to me about the difference between um, improv and. Um, and whatever he said but a script, uh, a scripted scripted as opposed yeah. to improv. yeah right yeah but um yeah i couldn't remember my last name if i was told to so all right yeah well yeah lyrics are tough too man like sometimes you know when you're calling up a song you haven't done it in a long time you know yeah yeah so you guys are coming here uh may 12th i believe it's a thursday i i think there might be tickets left i'm not sure so you guys go out and get those tickets. It's going to be a great show. I understand it's not going to be a um, couple tunes and you're out of there. It's, uh, do you mean, at least over an hour. You, you said there's going to be. Oh, it's uh, an hour and a half or, or more. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And, um, and, you know, again, we, we just came, we did a few of these shows in November. Um, right. And I, I, I just love that format. You know, I, I loved being with my band down down in the state side just recently that was fun too they all have a bit of a different vibe but the theater show is nice because it's like the two sets i, I dig it i look forward to it well we're looking forward to seeing you here in the sioux colin um right. have a safe trip uh, across the country and uh don't be breaking any more glass windows okay we want you all right yeah seat. glass ceilings we need glass ceilings i don't know what you're saying <laughs> okay, okay. Well, thanks. Oh, before I let you go, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? Subscribe. Do as Colin James says and subscribe to the channel so we get <laughs> to more great interviews with great interviewees. Thanks, Colin. Okay, man. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.